crew is headed to southwest Kansas in this episode of Song Dog Mafia's Predator Assassins. We're headed to the largest public land in Kansas. In 1937, the U.S. government bought this land to later be named the Cimarron National Grasslands in 1960. Up until around 1885, the American bison was hunted almost to extinction. But places like the grasslands as protected helped that number come back up to almost 65,000. The Santa Fe Trail, which was a route that went from Missouri over to New Mexico, went right through this piece of land. Travelers such as immigrants and traders used this trail very heavily in the 18th and early 1900s. The landscape here is a lot different than what we're used to. There's no timber and brush, but there's a lot of plateaus and small valleys for them to hide in, so the coyote hunting is good. As we start to get into Kansas and get even closer, we start to think, what have we gotten ourselves into? Why have we traveled so far? We got in there very late. We got in there in February, so it, this piece of land had been hit pretty hard. You know, I'm sure other people had been calling, probably a lot of educated dogs, and it was just very late in the season. Trappers had been in there, so we weren't sure how we were gonna do, but we were gonna keep on trying and go at it hard. It's been kind of rough, been slow, and wind's blowing about 15 to 20 mile an hour, which we're not used to, and this terrain is awesome looking, but back home we look for a lot of brush and stuff, and out here there ain't nothing, so we're kind of having a tough time, but we're gonna keep after and see if we can get one called in. We did some calling, didn't see anything, so we decided since we don't have any prairie dogs back home, let's do some prairie dog hunting. We kind of switched from coyote hunting to prairie dog, and uh, we had a blast. Having a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know, we probably shot a dozen prairie dogs. Um, I don't know, we're going to keep after coyote hunting, but if we see them prairie dogs, we're going to stay after them too. So just out to have a good time. Uh, hopefully this evening gets a little better. I know the wind's supposed to die down tomorrow too, so hopefully it gets better. So we ended up laying two dogs down on the first day. Uh, it was very tough calling. We didn't get them on film. Uh, the, the terrain didn't give it to us, but you know, when we take an opportunity to shoot a coyote, we're gonna do it. After the first day and laying down a couple dogs, we go to a new area that we're up on almost like a small cliff and we're overlooking a, a large bottom with some trees. It's some of the only trees that you can find in, in this whole area. And we thought maybe there were some coyotes up in there. We were getting ready to get up and we just started to leave and grab our guns and Keith says, sit down, sit down, sit down. So I said, what? And he looks over and he says, we got a cat. So we look over to our left and sitting up on this hill watching us and no telling how long he was watching us was a beautiful bobcat. He was not worried at all, but he was really wanting to know what that sound was and where it was coming from. The sad thing about this is we had to let this cat walk. We were like less than two weeks out from the season ending in Kansas. So we were a little disappointed, but it was really nice to watch this cat and know that we at least did our job and, and called this guy in. We wake up the next morning, we're ready to hit it again at daylight. We feel good about this morning because it's really cold, it's brisk, and we have no wind. That's the kind of conditions we want. So we head to our first stand. We've got a lot of nice rolling hills. It's a lot different terrain than some of the other parts we've seen. We get off and we start out with the Reese Outdoors Buffalo Horn Howler. I left a nice, long, lone howl, and Keith answers me on the surge series from Reese Outdoors. And we get responses all around us. 
and then the next thing we know, we got two groups going off. We got a group to our right and a group to our left. We got somebody letting us know he's in the area and he doesn't like us there. He fires off at us and he is not happy. So we do it again. We do give him another quick one. And then lo and behold, he fires off again. And this guy was moving in fast. After we know that he's coming and he's not happy, we position ourselves and turn around to where we can get a shot at this guy. We hit the Ico Jackrabbit and that finished the deal. He came in on a mission. This guy was determined to see who was in his area. He popped up over the hill to let us know that he was there and he didn't like us there, but that didn't end up too well for him. Yeah! Woo! Woo! I'm on him. Got him. Not a real big dog, but uh... nope. We got a male, female, yeah. another male. Yeah, uh, that's our third one of the trip, isn't it? Yeah. Keith got two of them uh, yesterday. It's been kind of a slow start, but uh, you know we come in here kind of late season, kind of to be expected. But, uh, pretty easy setup this morning. Came out here early. Uh, used some Reese Outdoors, the new uh, Buffalo Horn Howler. You know he, uh, ser him and Keith serenaded and. But uh, they answered right back, came down the hill, and it was one of those deals that we couldn't get a whole lot of film of him because he was going to go down one of these big dips. You can see that hill behind us. He wasn't planning on circling us or anything. He was coming right for the Icotech. We had that decoy going, and he was coming right for it. So it was a, a now or never type of deal. Yeah, we didn't hardly do any calling. He was, he was mad. He was coming in. We got to see a lot of different terrain, a lot of different animals. We don't have mule deer back in Missouri. We've seen some nice mule deer. And then one other thing that we had a pretty neat experience with, we saw an antelope. As we were traveling across this road, one started coming across the field and uh, he was bound to turn and he was gonna beat us on the road. And he started running beside us and uh, we were able to get that on film. That was pretty neat. It was a fun trip. We got to see all kinds of animals. It, start, it started out just a little, little rough there yesterday. Yeah. You know, we didn't see our first coyote until noon or one o'clock. And then to shoot him and not get him on film, that was a bummer, but at least we got him in the truck. It's like a switch, you yeah. know, nothing for a day and then all of a sudden just they're everywhere, you know. And then at we four o'clock we started we seen probably six. Yeah. Did some prairie dog hunting in between. We don't have prairie dogs back in Missouri, so that was, a that was fun for us to kind of take a break from the monotony of not seeing or killing any coyotes and get to do something we don't get to do every day. So we just stopped, took a break on that for a while and it was worth the trip. Yeah. Oh definitely. Yeah. The, the prairie trip. dogs were that was a blast, you know. I don't know, that kinda of makes me want to come back just to kill prairie dogs. We picked this land in Kansas just because we like to get out of Missouri and see some different terrain and see some different calling areas. We wish we would have got in a little earlier. It was very late season. You know, it's probably been overcalled. It's it's probably been trapped. You know, there's probably been all kinds of people in there, but just nice to see some different area. You know, the reason we picked this terrain, we've seen some video and pictures of it and it, you know, it looked awesome and we've heard a lot of good things about it. We definitely hope to go back there again sometime, but a little earlier in the season, maybe have some more luck. Mm -hmm.